stop that ballerina kick now, will you? Don't kick it with your toe instead. All right, here we go. Okay, there's a strong possibility that Green Bay is going to blitz us a lot this week. It's uh, really very interesting to me that you had all this footage about a team six days to Sunday, and it's never been seen. I'd like to see it myself. I'll be interested to see when you put that one together. We had a great practice on Tuesday. We have a great practice on Wednesday. And then when it's, they're supposed to be picking up the tempo, getting ready for the ball game on Sunday, we go downhill instead of uphill. Whatever the game plan calls for, we're going to play it to the hill. We have to go in there and win it. We feel like we should have won more games at this point in the season than we have. But Steve and I, I think it was, I have to take the credit, I have to. I said to him, I wanted to make a movie, a, a regular movie, not, not a little uh, 16 mil, a, a movie for release in theaters about six days to Sunday. And uh, the problem was trying to find a team that would let us do that. As it turned out, Hank Stram's New Orleans Saints were the team who gave us full access for a week in 1976. We were really excited about the possibilities of this film. Entree into every closed door meeting, every practice session, the deepest thoughts of every player as they prepared for a week nine game against the Green Bay Packers. We shot everything, and I do mean everything. But the film was never completed. Hank Stram was fired before we could edit the footage, and the league didn't want us to continue the project. So the 40,000 feet of film sat in our film vault untouched for a quarter of a century. Now, over the years, we've revisited this concept a number of times, living with several different NFL teams for a week. We thought, why not complete the film that started it all? So we present here the ultimate lost treasure. The NFL film you never saw. The original Six Days to Sunday. Our documentary crew joined the Saints on the day of their unexpected loss to the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to come back and we're going to win some games. And maybe we can, we can learn from this and it'll make us a much better football team. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We've had some tough times, but I think this is, without a doubt, the toughest loss that we've, we've had all year long. They were t totally different team in the second half after they scored the first touchdown. And uh, the momentum changed completely. We got it back and then lost it when we missed the extra point. This was very, very bitter to take. There's no way to describe it. No, nah, there really isn't. No way you can explain it. As the new week begins, Hank Stram allows us into his palatial office as he dissects the loss in Atlanta. Success in the next game depends on identifying Sunday's mistakes. And it just... Uh, hard to understand how we can go from one extreme in the first half to the opposite extreme in the second half. We didn't make a first down situations when we had to make them. Uh, we didn't make a kick when we had to kick it. We didn't make tackles when we had to make the tackles and basically that you know that's why you win or lose football games and uh, the the important thing is that we have to get to a conclusion as to why uh, we had that kind of a breakdown in the second half. Uh, from an offensive standpoint, from an offensive line standpoint, or was the overall grade? Basically, they're about, about the same as last week. Uh, of course, we fell down in the second half because of the short yardage. 
situations that we didn't come up with. Uh, and uh, we didn't just blow anybody off the line doing that part of the game. And they controlled us instead of us controlling them. There were some opportunities that we had during the course of the game that a receiver goes through where, you know, it might be one or two plays during the course of a game where he has to make the big play. And <coughs> those opportunities came about four or five times and, uh, and we didn't get that done. I think the important thing is they're all correctable mistakes and we just got to take the things that we could use from the game and make it a, a positive thing for this week's game against the Green Bay Packers because we've got to go after it uh, with the same spirit and I think the same intensity that we've had for some of the other ball games that we didn't have in the second half of the game last week. Okay, let's go to work. Every Monday, we just start another battle in here in the training room with the guys that are injured. And we, uh, we have to fight like hell to get these guys back into playing condition for the following Sunday's game. And it, and it takes a full six days. Thumbnail. Stepped on in the, uh, in the game's thumbnail. And uh, it's, it's full of blood. And just, just a minute ago, we just took all the blood out just by drilling a little hole into the nail itself, relieving the pressure in the blood. We start on the airplane, coming back from Atlanta. The guys that were injured, we've got ice bags and ace bandages, and we just go up and down the aisles. So we've got an hour and 20 minute flight coming back from Atlanta. We'll put the ice pack on them. They can get uh, you know, a good hour's treatment on the airplane. And they come in Monday morning at uh, 9 o'clock, and our, our team physician is here. We re-examine and re-evaluate Sunday's injuries and continue on with the treatment, even though Monday is their day off. The injured guys are required to be in here for treatment. I would have to say this has probably been the, the low point of our of our season. I've been I've been here eight years. I've seen a lot of a lot of uh, losses, but this past uh, loss in Atlanta this Sunday is a red string on my scale here is about as low as the guys have been this uh, this season. Pull out all the stops this week. We've got to get the people that were hurt Sunday. We've got to get them back and, and ready to play against Green Bay. On Tuesday morning, the Saints report for duty. The countdown has already begun for Sunday's game against the Green Bay Packers. Most of the players are rested from their day off. There you go, man. One is not. I took my wife in about 9 o'clock uh, right after we got back from... Uh, we got in about 7, you know, in the game, and right after we got back from Atlanta, she had it at 7 the next morning, my little boy. Weighed 7 pounds, 2 ounces. Named him Bo. <laughs> it's a pretty long day for me, I tell you. I stayed up, stayed up a good while, but it didn't make things a little bit better feeling anyway. The humid air of the Louisiana Bayou calls the players outside for the week's first practice. We're going to rehearse now. Pay attention. Now. We're going to rehearse what we made mistakes on in the, uh, in the game the other day. Make sure we'll go through that in good shape. No mistakes and everything. Go through 30 plays without a mistake today. Now let's concentrate on what you got to do. Get it up. Get it up there. That's it. That's it. Throw it good now. Throw it good. Not too fast. Not too nice and easy. Oh, you rascal. Throw it good, like, like you throw it to your wife. Throw it tenderly now, Bob. Tenderly, tenderly, tenderly. Not one of those frozen. There you go, right return. No, you got it. Me, 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 you got a call. You, you, me, me, never, never a problem with that, uh, that kind of a call. If you say, I got it, then he doesn't know whether you said, I got it or you got it, see? You kick soft, and then you kick an intermediate, and then you kick a killer. I see, and you can't. Yeah, you can. You, you're, you, you know, you're like a Thomas Edison. You're experimenting all the time. See, see, you can't do that. See, you're not, a, you're not an inventor. You're a kicker. I ought to send you up to, to uh, Philadelphia and spend some time with Ed Sable of NFL Film because he's a golfer. He's a classic golfer. He's got a fantastic swing. See, if you could see him swing and see how consistently well. He hits Same the ball the sideways, ball. yeah, and out of bounds, and into the water, and into the sand trap. You learn an awful lot from him, see? I played golf with him a lot, but uh, I had to watch him too closely. So I, I couldn't concentrate on my game. I was concentrating on him kicking the ball out of the rough. Okay. All right, going left this time, out of bounds left. He had little tricks like that. You know, when you get ready to putt, he'd drop his club, and oh, I'm sorry. 
If you don't mentally know exactly, plot the course, you know, I'm going outside, then, you know, when you get the ball, then you got to make a spontaneous decision as to where the hell you're going to go. Stretch it out. Yeah, you got to stretch it out because once you stretch it and you get some seams, they're not going to tackle you. You got to run through people. You got to run through arms, just like you did against the, the Rams. Those two guys get a shot at you. Right, you ran through there like, like uh, they, they threw two pieces of popcorn at you. See? Come on up. That's it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Blow it out, blow it out, but hold it. Put it down slow. Tell them Get your hands strong. Get your hands strong. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we're trying to further advance our strength and our cardiovascular endurance and our muscular endurance and explosive power. Discipline I learned from George S. Patton Jr.'s Third Army in Europe. We use the same type of discipline here in lifting weights and running cross country. Thirty years ago, when I returned from Germany, I brought back a Jeep, a trailer, two German Shepherd dogs, a barbell, and a Fraulein. Now, thirty years later, everything is either wore out, walked out, or died. The only thing that remains is the barbell. That's why we lift weights. Don't let your wrist bend. Keep it straight. People say we try and maintain. I don't believe in the word maintain. I can just see Patton when you use maintain, he'd chop your head off. You must lift weights, you must run cross country, you must run sprints, and then you must learn your skills. Your skills are taught by your coaches. Coach Stram meets with his yeah. offensive coaches to design a yeah. game plan to attack the Packers' defense. Yeah, but we got to get outside quickly against these people, as big and strong as they are, especially inside. So that's like, you know, if we, if we roll left or right and they blitz inside, it's like, you know, throwing a piece of popcorn in there. You're not gonna... But the slot, the same rule applies as if it were a weak side. Yeah. The linebackers up a line of scrimmage, we come out. Well, of we got to get out of it. Yeah, eliminate. It, it, seems, it seems like they play that weak linebacker like guard defense when he's gold or brown formation. He's right on that line of scrimmage and he comes. As soon as he sees flow coming yeah. to him, he's coming hard. We got to keep changing the count. We can't consistently go on one and then go on two so they can anticipate the count. We gotta keep changing it. We gotta get a little bit of the Lawrence Welk in there, you know, a little bit of the one and the two and the three, or else we're gonna have trouble. They're gonna overpower us at the, at the line of scrimmage. We've got to change the tempo, change the pace, so we keep the defense off balance. Each of Strand's assistant coaches has a different role in the preparations. Dick Stanfell maps the Packers' tendencies with the mathematical precision of a slide rule, while Sam Rotigliano critiques his wide receivers. All right, this was uh, one of the most significant things that happened this past weekend in Atlanta. Here's a third down and eight situation. Completely predictable with the blitz. We got an opportunity for a big play, and we blew it. We didn't have the opportunity to convert it to a touchdown, something that we had worked on all week long for Atlanta in particular, and we blew it. Now, one thing is that Green Bay changes each week on their punt rush, their punt returns. By midweek, the Saints kickoff, are kickoff all return, business. But they actually change a lot. I was the cameraman for this shoot, and I can still recall the transformation in the team that occurred on Wednesday as the assistant coaches began working with small groups of players. And now if this fella goes out like this, he'll pick him up, and this guy has stunned it inside. You know, when you have a specialty area, team, man. you got to realize that you only have 43 ball players. Like in a game myself, we, I got three of them hurt. Thinking, all of a sudden, I have to make a million changes. If you're going to come in from the outside you here, you feel you're punting team, outside, you got a punt Chris, return team, you got a kickoff, you got a kickoff return team, you got an onside kick. Chris, you can jump any side you want. Capone, you get on the nose of the center and always go to the left. You got the field goal, you know, and the extra point. King Ray, you jump any side that you want to go and just blow it in there. And you have all these things that you have to make adjustments. Tommy, he's with his wife right now. A, but uh, Tommy can go any place, but we got a bump and run. I think today is our full bump hard work day. I think when the coach yeah, talks to him, it's today which, uh, we're uh, either going to make mental did, mistakes or we're not going to make any mistakes. And then you can just see from the time of that first meeting, you get right into your film work and game planning, and their whole attitude becomes absorbed, and their attention becomes on the next game. You do see a transition, and it's a really amazing one. With uh, Green Bay, the type of team that they are, it's going to be a, a game where you're going to face some of the biggest people on a defensive team that uh, so far this year. <clears throat> and I think the thing that we've got to keep in mind when we attack. Green Bay's defense is we've got to hit them quick 
and we've got to and get outside. The other thing we've got to really be concerned about from here on in for the rest of the week is the possibility of blitzes. They are a heavy blitz team, so that's one way they feel they can control us. So we've got to be very alert this week and pick up the blitz. We've got a brown left, but it's like a 21-man G, only the fullback's going for the defensive end. You've got a, a guard pull and a tackle pull, okay? Just like a 21-man G. 28 trap. Let's go on one. Ready? That's the way we got to change the count. That's very important. we got to keep changing that count. Let's go. All right, punt protection. The ball's on a five-yard line. Coming out. Come on, we shouldn't have any mistakes now. We did it, did it yesterday. We're doing it again. Come on, James. What the hell are you doing? Come on, we cannot have a mistake down here. We got to have the ball snap back there perfectly. That, that was too high. Remember, any kind of a bad snap, anything goes wrong in here, you want to down it, we'll give them two, but I'm going to give them six. All right. A series of arm surgeries has benched the Saints star quarterback, Archie Manning, for the entire season. Somebody said you're out playing golf today. Took the cast off to play golf and put it back in. <laughs> you did a good job. Makes it, it looks like just like the old one. Stram focuses on coaching his backup quarterback, Bobby Douglas. Oh, that's a good shot. That's a good shot, Bobby. Let's see if you can eliminate the two words that you say, say all the time. You say, you give the play, and then you say, let's go. So you eliminate, eliminate, let's go. Okay? okay? It's two words. What well, takes time, see? All right? If you've got to tell them when to go, we're in trouble. Oh, there you got the spot. Oh! Damn. you got to be careful, Larry. You're going to tear up that goal post. Hey, everybody's bad there. You see, the ball's up in the air, and we're all looking at the grass. Somebody, there's four guys there. Somebody ought to get that interception. So that's a big play. That's going to be an interception. You know, with the plays. Stram is meticulous about time. He is obsessed with shaving excess seconds from the play call. If you're staying here, see, like it's a thousand one, thousand two, and then you go a thousand three, thousand four. See, it's, it's four seconds. You got a, you got a uh, stopwatch. Okay, good. Yeah, it's great. You didn't drop it or nothing. That's good. Do, do this for me for a few minutes. Yeah. Just time the huddle for me. Ready? Just time. See how much, how long it takes to to run the playoff. Okay. Uh, Write those times down with the, with the next to the plays. What it? As Archie uh, gives them to us, 26. Damn it! How the hell can that take so long? How much? 21 seconds again. Huh? Now everybody, everybody has got to be aware into what we have to do to get plenty of time to call plays from the sideline. You see, we should be up to the line of scrimmage and anchored in five seconds. See. Now, if we take 10 seconds, then it just makes it that much tougher for us to get everything done. All right, let's now, let's call the play, and let's see how long it'll take you to get to the line of scrimmage. Red, right at, double wing, double wing, now. Red, right at, Lead. Hard, Lead. Hard, now. now, get up there, hurry up, get set, come on, move. Five and a half seconds, well, that's a hell of a lot better. All right. Call out the time every time, Whitey, would you please? That we were doing five seconds real well at training camp, and now all of a sudden today's time it is 10, 12 seconds, see? Right. Sure. And that, that's it, Hank. Hey. Uh, see, and uh, it just takes a the little dinky thing like that makes a difference, eh? And I think what we'll do all week long, too, is send them in from the sideline and time it just, just to make sure that we don't get any bad habits. If you're not careful, we do it, you know, we don't get in there quickly enough, but we're not careful, we, we blow. Five, six, seven seconds, just get them blind scrimmage. Then. Yeah. I'm going through the newspapers of all the other towns uh, from all the other teams in the league. You know, most of the teams don't even bother taking the time to look at them. I'm looking for anything that might help us in the next couple weeks if we're ha if we're going to be playing one of these teams, or say we uh, might be interested in making a trade or so. We might pick out a player feature and a guy that we might be interested in picking up, say, uh, at a later date or so. But Coach Stram usually uh, looks at these with interest. Yeah, Green Bay picked up Plummer. They got Osborne from the Vikings, too. 14 years, that's just kind of weather, though, that uh, 20 below. It's not to be that cold Sunday, too. About 20 degrees and snowing right now, I think. I think that's their kind of weather. That would definitely be a distinct advantage for them. But uh, I think in our situation, it's a must-win situation, so it won't matter if it's raining or snowing or what. 
Yeah, that's about it, I guess. I don't know what's gonna happen up in that snow. What? What's the deal? We're gonna kick Green Bay's Gluteus Maximus. <laughs> Every team has its share of characters. One guy on the 76 Saints who fascinated me was the talented running back Chuck Muncie because you never saw him without those thick glasses. The diagnosis was uh, sinusitis and uh, got a shot of antibiotic and a shot of cortisone. He's got uh, medicine. Tony uh, stopped and picked up medicine at the drugstore. The guys already got it. Now the next thing we got to do, we got to get those glasses. Okay. We got to get those contacts for him. Okay. You set it up with Muncie and make sure that uh, we set an appointment and we get the thing all worked out so he can start wearing those contact lenses and see how they, how they work. Very good. All right? Okay? Fran's got the guy's number. In addition to the game plan, Hank has to deal with other issues. One running back needs contact lenses. Another, Tony Galbraith, needs help managing his social calendar. And what, what, is, what do you have to do to your... Uh, you, you have a commitment, you say, tonight? Yeah. Uh, did you tell him you're going to be at the Touchdown Club? No, I didn't tell him nothing. Who, who made the arrangements for you? Uh, I got a letter. When, how long ago did you get the letter? Oh, uh, I'll say it was about a week and a half ago. You already had a previous yeah. commitment. The only thing about it is I think they advertised it, didn't they? Did they advertise you coming over there? I think so. See, which I wish you'd have told me, then we could have gotten it, it would have been a problem. So you'd say, hey, I already made a date. Then we could have canceled it, and we got somebody else. It wouldn't have been a problem. How long did you know about this date? Oh, I knew about this. And I think uh, he had had a little too much maybe with the player negotiations and maybe that bugged him because that was not his forte. He, he enjoyed pure coaching. Head one. Good. Move, move, move. What the hell kind of a kick is that? Where the hell did you get that one, Rich? Try to keep it where all the green grass is. The stuff where all the white is, that's out of bounds, Rich. Uh, just in case. Just in case it would be a windy day, we need somebody to hold her. Let's have the holder hold the ball. Just in case, give me the holder. Come on, lay off that ballerina kick now, will you? Don't kick it with your toe, end step. Ready, set, go! Go, 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 go! Uh, how, do you, how do you think the practice has been so far? It's been a rotten practice, a rotten practice. We had a great practice on Tuesday. We have a great practice on Wednesday. And then when it's, they're supposed to be picking up the tempo, getting ready for the ball game on Sunday, we go downhill instead of uphill. What the hell's the matter with you? We can't beat anybody if we practice or play like we practiced this afternoon. Now, half the practice is over with. Now, let's get off, off our ass and let's practice like we should. Now, let's go. Practice continues late, forcing the players to rush to their afternoon meetings. <laughs> Go through the week without losing it. Okay, let me have your attention. Now, we know that the key to success in National Football League is defensive consistency, and that was what we did not do at Atlanta. Now, the unfortunate part about it is we're going to play the Green Bay Packers with a better offensive football team than the Atlanta Falcons. Better personnel. 43 years' experience in our offensive line. And what we had a dominance over Atlanta will not be there in Green Bay. And the thing that's very important is that the head coach has great heritage being involved with the Lombardi era. So the thing that we must do this week is to make sure that whatever the game plan calls for, that we're going to play it to the hill. Okay, the thing we've got to be sure that we do this week, we've got to get in the hole, we've got to speed everything up, get to the line of scrimmage and get the ball off as soon as possible. We really should never get in the situation as we did this week and you know, get too much time. If we get the blitz, let's go for the big play. Bobby Douglas is the subject of media scrutiny, but it's still not clear if he'll be leading the Saints on Sunday. I don't know if you're starting or not. Yeah. Are you? No. I don't know. You yeah. don't know yet either? Been really okay. told us. I take right. it. I, you know, yeah. uh, I think I am. Yeah. Well, you had. You sh certainly don't deserve to be sat down. No. Well, no, I'm, I'm sure I am. I don't think he's. How do you? You know. He just isn't going to say okay. a lot. Of, he's not going to say a lot of things. Yeah. Realistically, though, we will be ready to play this week because of the fact that we lost a game we felt like we should have won. I think we'll go out emotionally higher than we would a game that you had won. Billy Matt, come here, man. Want to watch some film? Okay. All right. All right, who do you want to watch? Detroit? Detroit. The Packers or? Detroit. Oakland and the Packers. Oakland Packers. No, Detroit. Open Detroit. We 
have to go in there and win it. We feel like we should have won more games at this point in the season than we have. This is a game where we feel like we can win two or three in a row, and this is a game we have to have. Okay, there's a strong possibility that Green Bay is going to blitz us a lot this week because of what's happened to us in the last few weeks. Now, uh, last week against Atlanta, we had some problems picking up some blitzes that Atlanta used. Now, this week, those blitzes that Atlanta used, Green Bay will be studying on film, and there's a great, uh, there's a great chance now that they'll use those blitzes against us this week. Because the most important thing right now is for us to get away from the blitz and to be able to pick it up. If someone does something to you and you don't pick it up and you're not successful in handling it, then you can count on that team and all the teams you're going to play as they review those films from week to week that you're going to see that. Because the most important thing there is everybody studies it. And if they see you can't handle it, then you're going to get, uh, you're going to get a handful of it every week. Well, I can have I'm just gonna go for a burger and a coke. <laughs> hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. No. Okay, uh, yeah, hamburger. You want coke? Coke, right? I'll have a cheeseburger and French dress and a root beer. Bobby D. Don't eat too much. You'll be back in the sweat box. <laughs> trying to make your weight. You're back trying to make that weight. I think they're probably just going to try and screen us and draw. And you know, they're going to bark stars. Yeah, they're gonna do. exactly. Just like the old the pack. Packs, yeah. You know, play action. You know, try and establish a running game like that. Uh, Is it going to be snowing there, I wonder? I don't know. It's been cold. Oh, it yeah. snowed a couple days ago, 22 degrees. <laughs> he's going to pull up in the coach's spot? Or what? Yeah, he's going to park. <laughs> you got a private spot? He's going to park right in the coach's spot. Friday's schedule is more relaxed. No team meetings, one short practice, and a chance to review the itinerary for Saturday's flight to Wisconsin. We leaving the 10 in the morning? <laughs> oh, man, I ain't gonna have What you want, man? Hey, we ought to get to see a movie, huh? Hell no. That's a short trip, man. Two hours and seven minutes. Chip sandwich. That's enough time to see a movie. I know. You get cold jack. You ain't going to no Green Bay for no vacation. Charlie's Angel. Hmm? You might. Might see Ali and Faith. You might. Little time remains before Sunday's game. But Friday's practice reveals weaknesses that can be clearly seen from anywhere on the field. 41 counter 0. 41 counter 0, Henry. We got a bad distribution with a fullback that time. You got to get back a little deeper. Green, go left wide. Flanker short motion, 16 lead on two. Double check the time. We leave the huddle till we get to the line of scrimmage. Who's checking on that? Who's got the watch? Damn it, we'll be doing the same thing again if we're not careful. Stram continues to work closely with kicker Rich Zaro, who's still feeling the sting of losing to Atlanta by a field goal. Now, nah, see, that was a good follow through that time. He came through the ball good. Your leg came up about knee high that time. See, the other ones are about ankle high. Look at that, see? All the difference in the world, you kick the ball. So you're hoping the ball through, you're wishing the ball through, you gotta kick the ball through there. Zaro is Harvard educated and fluent in seven languages. But Hank Stram speaks a language that is foreign, even to him. Ah, you hit a sausage shot again. Got a little peanut butter on that one. From uh, Milwaukee today, it's supposed to, we're supposed to have a little snow on Sunday. Snow flurries on Sunday and at about 35, so make sure you wear enough heavy clothes. All right, here we go, come on. Good work, good work, guys, good work. Yeah. Nobody wear white shoes. Let's see, they took all the balls in already. Yeah, they let, let, they let the air out of the balls. All right. Come, come back next week. Okay. All right? All right. Good. Get a little bit more time to practice. Okay. Okay? Good. When you spend a week with a coach, even the most intense competitor, you eventually see a soft side. For Hank Stram, father of six, children unlock huh? that side. Yeah, you gotta put the big fat cheeks. But he did sneak some coaching in there, too. You play now, though, all the time, don't you? Yeah, practice it. Well, let me see your stance. What kind of a stance you got? You got a stance? Well, let's see that stance. That's your stance? Let's see. What are you, a guard? 
Move your right leg back a little bit, Tony. Move it back. There you are. A little bit more. A little bit more. And move it to the right. Move it to the right. Move it to the right. Okay, there you are. Now we'll come down. That's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Threads <laughs> up. Who do you want them? Yeah, we have a defensive line meeting every Friday. We've had it for the last two years. See, it used to be last year that we had to do it because our meetings weren't long enough and we wanted to see more film of the other team. So we'd get together and drink beer and watch a film. But now, you know, Stram so thorough, you know, we just carried out the dinner part. You know, and we just drink, carry on, talk about other players and stuff that's going on. Was your feet hurting with those spikes on in Atlanta, that yeah. hard field? You know, can you imagine that field being frozen and having to wear those uh, hard cleats? Hard cleats. Yeah. You know, I don't, why don't they? Why I don't think. Why don't we pack our turf shoes? Thirty-five degrees. We're not playing at Green Bay. Though. You should be in Milwaukee. All right, we're playing at the baseball field. Are you sure we're not playing in, in, in Green Bay? No, no Milwaukee. Milwaukee. We're playing in Milwaukee because I guess we're coming up. I think the only thing to do to get us fired up is, uh, you know, to watch the game films from last week. Because yeah. I know when I when I when I walk out of there after seeing that film, I just, you know, I feel I feel mad, I feel frustrated, and I want to do something about it. And maybe maybe we can go out there and take out our frustrations on them this week. I, you know, because we need it. We got to have this game. Saturday afternoon, the Saints arrive in Packer Country. The Milwaukee Hilton is ground zero for their battle plans. By nature now, he's done it for years and years. You've got to be ready for play action on third one and two, because they do it. We have a difficult task tomorrow, simply because they're coming, and we are not in a position to be coming as hard as they are. They're improving. So we're going to be faced with a momentum that maybe is going to be a little stronger on their part. And I think that we have to assume a leadership role. We can't fall like we did in the second half against Atlanta and go away from what is the strength that we have. The players load up on red meat in the banquet hall. But their coach is too intent on the game plan to worry about eating. Upstairs, in the quiet of his room, Rich Zaro is also deep in thought. The psychological pressure on the kicker, I think, is, um, is very great. We compete against the goalposts and not uh, other individual and physical way. When we do miss a field goal, when I miss a field goal, I only blame myself. I could never blame the line or the holder, no matter what happened, because I know 99% of the time it's going to be my fault when I miss it. I spend a lot of time in the evening going over a few things that I have to remember tomorrow, that have to be automatic to me by tomorrow. And the reason I don't have a roommate is that um, I, uh, I, I think that it's easier for me just to concentrate on the whole thing by myself and not being distracted by late night conversation, etc. I know I had a roommate once and I was going over the sheets of, of drawings with goal posts and angles of approach of, of football and he was looking at me from the back of the room and uh, you know I was totally evolved in what I was doing and after a while he kind of didn't say anything because I spent about an hour and a half just doing that type of thing and appeared weird to him so maybe he mentioned to someone on the staff or something that you know uh, perhaps I wasn't too friendly or something like that and as a result I have ruined to myself which really I, I, I prefer in the long run because I can do all these things without interrupting anybody else and having you know um, more peace and quiet to do it myself <laughs> Where things are now. The rest of the Saints are settled in, two or three to a room. Things should be colder. What's Bones doing? Still doing his crossword puzzle? Yeah. yeah. He's thinking of a word for run. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia is definitely in the game here. Yeah, they are. You called it. Nah. He's your quarterback, I guess. Did you brush your teeth? Three times. For Sunday, look for partly cloudy, windy, and colder weather, high of 38, continued northwesterly winds. For tomorrow night, Such camaraderie holds no interest for Coach Stram on the night Monday, before the game. Cloudiness and cold, a high temperature only 40. Denver played great defense, and uh, Junior Bridgman shoot, shot the ball and it didn't go in. Just one of those things. Tough, tough way. Maybe tomorrow, though, we'll win with the, the pack at the county stadium. Uh, that would be a great thing for you. Okay. Okay. 
coming right back with more sports right after this. Offense will be introduced today. If we win the toss, we'll return it right. In the event that we win the toss, we will re return right. Kickoff return right. It's very hard to, to understand sometimes whether a team is really emotionally ready or not. However, I, I think that you have to believe in something. And uh, we sincerely believe that you're going to play on Sunday exactly like you practiced during the week. And I don't think you can wait until Sunday to think that you're going to win the football game. We feel good about the fact that we've had a very good week of work. And as a result, we feel that we're ready to play an excellent game against the Green Bay Packers. And that's the way we got to play this football game today. We got to play it because we care. Because you care for each other. Because you care for yourself. Because you care for this football team. And because you care about winning. That's what it's all about. Let's go win it. Let's go win it. Let's go, baby. Where the hell is that wind coming from? A change? Come on, get it up there. What's the guy? He thinks he's going to sit back there all day without any, without any push. It's going to be murder, I'm telling you. Come on, we got to get pressure. We got to get pressure. got to get pressure. More pressure, more pressure. Oh, my God. Get him from behind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on, we need a big play. Come on, we got to get a fumble. We got to get a turnover. Again. Come on, baby, baby. We're doing it. All right, we're back in business. All right, we're back in business. All right, that's the way, Richard. You've done good there, kid. You've done good there, Richard. Nice going. Give me five. I'll give you a sausage after. Come on, give it good. Bobby Douglas in the corner. Come on, Bobby. 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 Damn it. Boy, can you believe that? How many balls? We must have dropped 10 balls today. We gotta get more pressure inside. Watch for a play action. In the closely played game, every score is answered with a score. Emotions on the sidelines swing wildly from elation to despair. Damn it. No pressure, no pressure. God Almighty. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Did you see the kid? He was wide open. They tripped him. How could you miss that kind of a call? How could you possibly miss that? That's criminal. Really criminal. 
That's criminal. Instead of those white pants, we ought to get you a pair of pants to match the top. That's what you ought to do. That's right. The Saints attempt the final drive, but time is running out. 8,900. week of careful preparation now becomes irrelevant. In the final series, Green Bay controls the ball with a five-point lead, leaving the Saints with nothing to do but watch the last few seconds run off the game clock. Mike, good luck to you the rest okay, of the way. Same to you, Bart. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. You gotta catch the ball when you're supposed to, and you gotta stop people when you're supposed to, and you're supposed to, you know, you gotta do other things which you have to do to win, and we just haven't been able to do that. We just dropped so many passes today, it was just incredible. You think the weather was a primary factor? No, it can't, no, it can't be, a, it can never be a factor. Those are the kind of games you should win, you know, and you, and you score that many points. Scored 27 points, is that what it was? Yeah. I haven't seen any of this film since I shot it in 1976. And you know, it's funny, looking at it now, knowing what happened to all these people. Pete Athis parlayed his experience in front of our cameras into a supporting role in the low-budget film, Jack the Ripper Goes West. I hope they do a good job editing this, Pete, for your sake. <laughs> Remember, anything you say, Pete, could be held against you. Huh? <laughs> could be shown against you. So you can, do, you can just edit this. Bobby Douglas must have liked Wisconsin. He moved there to quarterback the Green Bay Packers in 1978. Thumbnail stepped on. In the, uh, in the game's he thumbnail. Dean Kleinschmidt and, uh, remained loyal to New Orleans, blood, just serving just as the Saints trainer for the next 22 the seasons. The nail itself. Go down a little further. Alvin Roy had a long and rewarding career as one of the NFL's first conditioning coaches. He passed away a few years ago. That's it. Some of this lost footage I'd forgotten. But one thing I remember was my interview with Alvin Roy. He gave me the single most bizarre answer I've ever received in 35 years of filmmaking. Now listen to this and try to follow Alvin's train of thought. Alvin, here's a question we've been asking a lot of coaches. I'm curious what your answer would be. What do you think a player learns from, from playing pro football, from his experience in the game? What do you think a player gets from that? Uh, a player receives from... Uh... Uh, he learns how to, to take it. He learns how to lose. He learns the same thing that a man learned in World War II. He learns how to take it. Uh, the, the men of the National Football men, uh, League are, are real men. They're, they're very wise because they've gotten their tails beat and they learn to come back. And they experience getting the hard knocks, getting hit physically. They experience what it is to lose and what it is to win and what it is to, uh, the, to participate. And uh, the men that, uh, like now they say, the sex revolution. How silly can that be? In World War II, we had four million soldiers, 24 hours a day, looking for sex. How in the hell can the revolution be more now than it was then? It was in jeeps, on trailers, out in the fields, under the bushes, in the battlefields, everywhere. It was sex, sex, sex. 24 hours a day, they lived for sex. Now they say there's a sex revolution going on. Crazy. But the young men of the National Football League are, uh, they know what it is to take it. They're, they're fine young men. They know what it is to play hurt. They know what it is to play bleeding. I, I love them. They're great men. I'm still trying to figure out that one. And the quicker we do it, the better this football team's going to be. In the Jim Garrett was a head coach in the short-lived World Football League for a year. He spent the past decade as a scout for the Dallas Cowboys. There were some opportunities that we had during the course of the game. Sam Rotigliano was the Cleveland Browns head coach from 1978 through 1984 and twice led the team to the playoffs. 
He was great to work with when we spotlighted the Browns for another six days to Sunday feature. I don't think that we played uh, as well in that game as we had in the previous two games. Uh, you take him from a, a defensive line standpoint. John Beek had the most successful career of all the assistant coaches on the 76 Saints. He became general manager of the Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos. And as for Hank Stram, the Saints released him at the end of the 77 season, which is why this film never saw the light of day until now. Although this marked the end of Hank's coaching career, he can look back on a resume that includes two American Football League championships with the Kansas City Chiefs, more victories than any other AFL coach, and of course the ultimate victory, a Super Bowl win. But I think that his professional career it was a successful one. It was a good one, as long as he was there. Then when he got out of it, you know, it was all over. He never went back. I don't think he wanted to go back. He calls me about uh, once or twice a month. And he says, hello, Schmash. What are you doing there, Schmash? What's, what's up? What's up? What's happening around the league? Talk to me. And then he goes into a tirade about everything is wrong. This is wrong. They're not doing this right. They're not doing that. It's terrible. Oh. Ain't what it used to be, Ed. Uh, well, talk to you next time. So long.